Hello! In the previous lesson, we were able to style the project listing section. And as a result, we were able to get something fantastic as this. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to style this total project summary section. So we're going to be styling side by side. Let's see how that works. In the CSS, let us see how we can copy the style. Let's leave a comment just to know what we're about to do. Let's call it secondary statistics. In the secondary statistics, the first thing we want to style is this chart. So let's just leave a comment to say chart. Something is missing in our mockup. If we check the design that we have, there is this tree completed, then from five projects. Let's see how we can add that to our HTML. So still under this chart, we are going to have another div called completed or complete. I'm going to spell it like this. Then let's have our H3. The H3 is going to have what we have here, tree completed. Just say tree completed. Then let's see what they have here from five projects. So we can have P tab for that from five projects. If we save it, you can see that we have it under. So let's try to style it. So we're going to copy. Let's just write it from scratch. Let's say dashboard. We want the secondary. Then we want the charts. After the chart, we want complete. We want the test align to be center. We want the margin. Let's set the margin top. Or let's even just set the margin to be like 40 top and bottom. 40 pixel top and bottom. Then 0 pixel left and right. You can see what we have, which is cool. Let's see more further and target the H3. The H3, we want to remove the line height. We don't want the space in between the two of them. So let's just say line height of zero pixel. This should fix it, cool. The next is, let's change the color of the P tag. Let's say the P tag is going to be color. Let's use the light gray. As you can see, that works. So let's try to style the recent project. I'm just going to leave a comment and call it recent project. Let's put S. Okay, similar to what we have, instead of the chart, we can just have, then let's call the recent project, recent project class. Let's call on the listing. What we want is the H2. So let's look at what we've done so far. We call on the, the secondary class, which is the parent. Then we call on the recent project, followed by the listing. Then we call the H2. That's correct. So we want the line height as well. We want to remove the line height and give it like zero pixel. So this will remove all the space between, which is cool. We want the P tag as well to have the light gray color. Nice. Now we want this to display side by side. So let's just target the listing. We're going to remove this P and just say display flex, justify content, the space between. Cool, this should give us what we want. Let's check the responsive app version. Let's see that everything is working nice. Okay, fine. All right, so if we check our prototype, you can see that we have white background. Let's apply the white background. 
So we have white background for this section and also white background for this section. So let's apply for the section, the listing section first. So we're just going to have recent project. So the recent project, we're going to give it background color, background color of white. So the white is going to be hexadecimal, pan FF, which is white. For scroll up, you can see that we already have the white background. Then let's have the padding. So we want to have padding. Let's say 15 pixel top, 15 pixel right, 15 pixel bottom, but let's have 50 pixel, 50 pixel right, 50 pixel left, which is cool. Or let's make it 60. So we have enough space. Let's make it position of relative. Okay, so we can have the same thing for the chat section. So we're just going to have in the chat section, let's just have it here. Instead of recent, let's just have chat. But in this case, we don't need padding. We don't need, okay, I think we might need padding. We might need padding, but this time around, Let's just make everything 15 pixel altogether. Let's apply margin bottom to like 30 pixel. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, let's check our mobile view makes a lot of sense. We can also apply this margin bottom to this as well so that we can have margin bottom as well which looks this look very cool. Let's check our prototype. What's left now is this color tagging. Let's see how we can add the category. To add the category, let's just duplicate this and we're going to target the category. Recent project, then let's target category. So we can declare our width, which is going to be 16 pixel. Height as well is going to be 16 pixel. We can make border radius to be 16 pixel as well. This will give us the round. Let's make the position to be around the position of the absolute. Now, for us to make this work, we need to apply the classes to category. Remember the Category color we created. We're just going to have it say category. Let's give it color of one. You can see that we have color one. Let's give this color of two. And give this color of three, and we can give the last one color of four. So we have the categories with their color. But let's position them. So let's say left. The left can be 10 pixel. Let's have margin top. The margin top can be. 20 pixel. Let's check the mobile view properly. You can see that we have it showing properly. And it works. 
Let's see, check it. So what's left for us is to be able to control our media query and have the content display based on the screen sizes. As you can see, it looks pretty much well on the mobile version. But what we need to cater for in the next lesson is the media query, how it should display on iPad screen, which is 768 pixel, and also how it should display on larger screen. Those are things we're going to be looking in the next lesson. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media and do so that you'll be notified each time we release new tip. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.